Of course, of course. Oh, and here is my dear friend, Arthur Callahan. Boy is a hunter. Boy is a killer. Arthur, you've met but not been introduced to Mr. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sheriff. Well, how are you doing, sir? I'm fine. Tough business you boys had. We did? Well, there's no need to pretend with me, sir. Life can be tough. So it can. And no man owes another anything. No, sir. But still, I feel you were hard done by. Losing your employment like that? But still, here in Rhodes, we have work enough for honest men. Oh, that's some strong stuff. Still. Don't seem to be doing you any harm, I guess. Exactly. Whoa. Excuse me a moment. I told you we was moving up in this world. Deputies. You have finally <laughs> lost your mind. Amongst these drunkards, hillbillies, and slavers? Good, honest thieves like us. We're bound to be moralizers in a place like this. Oh, Sheriff Gray, you are back. Now listen, sir, there is shine in them woods, though, and it is cost in this county its good name and the state a whole lot of income. You boys wouldn't mind rooting it out. Maybe we'll make you permanent. I gotta set me down a second. Not a problem, sir. Not a problem at all. You are in safe hands now. And people waste time with the temperance movement. Liquor never dulled a good man's senses. Arthur, you ride with the deputy. Bill and I will follow. Climb on up. Let's go. Archibald? How are you? Pretty good. And your friend is behaving himself? Oh, yes. I think he's learned his lesson. Congratulations on becoming a temporarily deputized citizen of Scarlet Meadows County. Most towns have many hunters to do their dirty work these days, but Sheriff Gray believes the law should keep the law. Now, I'm sure I don't need to remind you there's a chain of command here. There is? Dang straight there is. This is a dangerous business, but follow my lead and you'll be just fine. Sure. Hey! Archibald wants to remind us he's in charge here. Of course. Who else would be? But you were a big help with them Anderson boys, and I put in a very good word with the sheriff on your behalf. We appreciate that. We rounded up the others soon after. I'm pushing for the rope myself, but that's by the by. So, these moonshiners. Not just any moonshiners. Braithwaite's. I told you about the Braithwaite's. Pretty sure you did. Old Cotton family had a fortune at one point until, well, a few changes in the labor laws. Now they're dealing in moonshine. We found their stills hidden all over Lemoyne. Quick as we destroy one, another one pops up. You could call it a pitiful fall from grace, if they had any grace to start with. I have no time for tax dodgers. Not to mention the fact that Catherine Braithwaite has a rather expensive interest in thoroughbred horses to maintain. But I heard something about it being gold these families were fighting over. Well, that's the rumor. But the Greys and the Braithwaites think the others stole a fortune from them. But it happened so long ago, I don't know for sure if it's true. Must be tough being rich, huh? <laughs> so I imagine.
That band rather suits you, Mr. W. Yes. I thought so, too. Does it feel good to be back at it, serving your country? I wouldn't go that far. Whoa! Whoa! Hold up. You see that wagon? I swear, they got it in for me. You could try washing once in a while. Come on, mister. Keep your eyes open. No. This must have happened recently. Hmm. Hey, come have a look at this. Look, suit and tie, one bullet clean through the forehead. Well, my money says this is the handiwork of a gang called the Lemoyne Raiders. Yeah, I've run into them. Let's see if we've got any identification. Okay, we should get going. I'll send someone over here later to clean this up. Would you mind taking the reins? I want to have a look at these papers. Sure. I'll direct you. Okay. Frederick Mitchell. Lemoyne State Legislator. Poor feller. Yes, this certainly smacks of the Raiders to me. Bunch of ex-army free staters without an ounce of respect for the law. That's seven government officials they've murdered this year alone. Yep. Not the nicest fellas in my experience. Go right at the crossroads. Oh, and I know the Braithwaites are for them. No shame. Trash begets trash, my Uncle Reginald used to say. He had a few stories, let me tell you. Town preacher and town sheriff. They're right again here. To drink a sailor under the table before breakfast. He had one tiny hand, like a child's, on the end of a grown man's arm. But anyway, this tells you what kind of people the Braithwaites are, selling moonshine to murderers. I tell folks don't even speak to him. Don't even look him in the eye. I'm sure I would. Here we are. So what was I saying? Something about the Braithwaites, I think. Even saying that word makes me sick. Now, anyone we find here, we bring in alive, understood? Round them up and take this operation... down for good. Come on. Let's see what we're dealing with. Is 
See? See? What did I tell you, boys? What did I say? I said this place was crawling with vermin, and we just found ourselves the rat's nest par excellence, as they say in Paris. My aunt, she went to Paris back in 78. Oh, handle this. Well, the way I said... Actually, let my friend here decide. He doesn't have your fine way with words, but he is definitely the man for the job. Let's split up. Arthur and Bill, me and Archibald. You boys want right or left? We'll take the left. Let's stop these filthy degenerate tax dodgers. The cheek of them. A fine idea. Remember what he said. We need them alive. Let's just knock them out and tie them up. Got it. Another one guarding the still. I'll get this feller trussed up. him with the other. I think that's it. Well, what do we do now? We better destroy all this. Any of your boys can handle explosives? Sure. Anyone but him. Oh, so, think you're real funny, don't you? tell me about the... <laughs> that is the last time well, I'll mention it, I swear. Yeah, I'm sure.
Let's find Dutch and get out of here. Fine by me. Are we getting out of here then? <laughs> well, forgive me, but me and my men must return to our lives. Ah, seems like we failed to destroy the last of the moonshine. Sure. Would you like us to? Well, I normally take it. For personal consumption, it's sort of part of the job. But I better get back home. Why don't I just take a jug or two and leave you boys the rest to show that there's no hard feelings on account of the war? We are all Americans. Of course. But my cousin, Webster, he used to say some of us is not as American as others, if you know what I mean. Only I didn't, quite. Come on, you degenerate, no good, white trash, hillbilly piece of scum. I know you, Billy Lime. Finally. You've always been a Finally. piece of crap. Come on, move. We have a life move on a land so stupid, a backwater so backwards that even we are like geniuses. <laughs> Bill, get this stuff out of here. Come on, you ride with me. Okay. Should I stash this somewhere near camp, boss? Yes, show it to Hosea. I'm sure he can find a use for it. Bit of trouble back there, Arthur? Ain't there always. From what they was yelling, I think they were the buyers. Old Archibald didn't ask too many questions, so neither should we. I ain't planning to. That was worth the effort, though. Deputized and hiding in plain sight. These... Law, man. These two families. I mean, I really think we can play this from all sides. It's got Hosea written all over it. This is starting to sound like the young Dutch again. What do you mean, young Dutch? I'm as strong as I have ever been. Hey, you know what? Why don't I race you back? Okay, you're on. That's the spirit. On my word. Set, go!
quite so good at running away, Arthur. Well, I never knew age had slowed you down quite so much. <laughs> well, time is a bastard. When you get to be my age, well, you'll know that better than anything. Be well. I had fun with you today. Here, I was gonna say you're like a son to me. But you're more than that. What's going on? Jose and John are looking for you. They went out to the moonshine stash, said you knew where that was. They was planning a visit to the Braithwaite place, but John needs to do something for Dutch now, so Hosea wants you to join him instead. Seems to be a lot going on. You're telling me. Okay, thank you. Okay, Miss Garrison? So, what do you think of this place? Not bad. Nice to be by the water. Yeah, it'll do for now. Arthur! Stay away from me. Oh, but, but, but I got a tip. That's exactly what I'm afraid of. Oh, it's a goodie, I'm telling you. <laughs> it always is with you. Then we end up hidden in a burning barn getting shot at. You're a sad man, Arthur Morgan. Sad man indeed. Okay, well, let's talk more later. Yep, yep. Okay, Arthur. You okay, Arthur? You want to talk? I think you're getting a bit too attached Hello, to that Uncle. badge now. My lady. That's the best hello you've got. Hello, Arthur. Don't worry, I'm just playing with you. Well, don't. All right, well, I should be getting on. We'll see you later. Voting. Women voting. <laughs> We're stuck in the ship now, Mr. Morgan. In the ship. We're drowning in mud. For a man of the cloth, you have quite a way with words. Words are the very least of my problems. The very least. I'm sure. All they'll let us do is teach children, clean houses, and line our backs for money. Much in the way of living. Even fancy women look sour. They'll beat us, enslave us, and punish us if we try to stand up to them. Guess I never saw it quite that way. I think I'd like to vote. All of you! This is my country. Rich country. So get to work! All of you! We can do well and fine here for a while. They will not think we came this way to get to work. We still need money. Lots of money. Get to work! Ha <laughs> ha, Mr. Morgan. Big boss man. Now, don't start believing that badge gives you real authority. Okay, take it easy. Another bizarre attempt at camaraderie. Really? 
Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan. I've noticed you've stopped paying into the box. I've been sort of busy, Miss Grimshaw. Hmm. Well, we all need to eat, Mr. Morgan. <sighs> I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Can't I talk don't... about this now, okay? Well, okay. fine. Hi, Arthur. I don't know who drinks more whiskey around here these days. You or Uncle. Is that meant to be funny? You don't remember going to bed half the time. What did I ever do to you? Maybe that's a good thing. I'll just ignore you then. Did you miss me, Miss Karen? Oh, yes. Quite dreadfully. Crying like a baby every night. Right beside myself, I was. Ask anybody. Really? No! I miss the calendar, boys. I miss Jenny. But the silver lining of it all is that there was no more of you. And then you come back. Now, that fate is a vindictive bastard after all. Ah, uh, you love me, really. No. No, I don't. Come here. <laughs> Jesus alive! <laughs> you keep your dirty, horseshit-eating hands off of me, or I'll stick a knife in you, boy. I love it when you talk nasty to me. Who's gonna play? Sounds good. That stew's rumbling in my stomach something fierce. Yes, it's worth it for a few percent. And that is a calculated risk. Good. Here. I see straight through you. Uh, okay. Sure. Yeah. You got Here. Jack and Squat. All right. Ha! Men can't laugh for shit. Oh, uh -huh. I am not so easy to deceive. Let's do it. Very good. Let's go. Huh. Yep. There must have been other variables. All right. Here. Have a look at these. Damn embarrassing way to finish. That ought to treat you right. Oh, shit. Hey! hey. Oh. Well, shit. Come on. Oh, guess I'll sit this one out. See you at the next one. I guess I'm about done.
Oh. What? Ah, uh, don't worry. It can wait. I'm too tired for this. Welcome, after a ticket. Ticket for one, please. We'll be starting soon, just inside the tent there. Untruth. 
but I have not drank a pint of liquor in over a year, and I will do my utmost to demonstrate the veracity of my claims. For a hundred years, steamboats have engaged in passage along our great rivers, but a man by the name of Cecil H. Peck is in the process of inventing a steamboat for the sky. The only limitation on its speed at which the porter can shovel on more coal. But parts of the country where coal is scarce, oars can be used in the skies to hasten your voyage and keep the passengers active while they travel. Near Pittsburgh, there lives a telegraph man named Aldous Kinnear, who each evening after supper retires to his barn and dons the wings of a giant creature and takes to the heavens. You will be delighted to know he has traveled considerable distances, as many as 45 miraculous feet. Unfortunately, on his record-breaking flight, he knocked over a lamp and was consumed by flames. His two boys, Percival and Charles, have promised to continue their dear pa's legacy of sky flight. A whole heap of men are fashioning contraptions to take us to the heavens. A flying machine powered by a trusty donkey. Once you arrive at your destination, you can mount the saddle and ride away. With this incredible contraption, one can enjoy some popcorn and have the best view in the house at the next flogging or lynching. Stagecoach robberies will soon be a relic of the past when we enlist our animal friends as couriers well out of range of man's shooting irons. But the most remarkable thing I have to reveal to you comes from a northern man called Moss John Nichols. Imagine travel without ever getting into a saddle. No doubt you have heard accounts or seen in person the majesty of flight achieved by performers in the circus. Mr. Nichols has perfected Sky Cannon. Passengers simply walk up the steps, relax into the barrel, and are transported with great flourish to the destination of their choice. The lame and infirmed who have been ravaged by scarlet fever or polio can once again call upon their loved ones. These newlyweds are all grown up, turned 17, said their wedding vows and are off to visit New York City. And some very forward thinkers have told me that within 10 years, dear audience, any of us can take a holiday trip to the moon. I must disclose I'm quite partial to this mode of transport. Ships and horses are like to sour my stomach. The future is in the skies, my friends. Look to the heavens. We are going to join him up there by and by. Come again, even better the second time. Well now, I was wondering when you'd be back. <gasps> should have called this dump Turd Town. I, I remember when this place was so wild, even the wolves were scared. Only thing to drink is fresh blood. Not for me. Now, it's all about churches and shops and all this other bullshit. That is ain't a pleasure. This is good. I'm sure he's thirsty, work. Mm-hmm. 
drunk, eh? Good thing. I'm not sleeping. Two men and two men. Wanna have a good time? Nope. No chance. All right. I'm only offering. <sighs> Shit, I fall. Things are looking okay. Huh. <laughs> That's as it should be. Come here. That's right. I had a dream about you last night. I just uh. know. <laughs> I like the pretty way you Ain't are. so bad. Well, then. You look meaner than a kill Kenny cat. This is a damn curse, I swear. I admire your perseverance, at least. I so much as heard of men thieving from saloon. These days, it's all I can do to hold on. Ladies love a winner. Put as much money as you like on that. This one time, I saw Phillips. Money, his horse, and his women all in about two hours. I'm just trying to help. In. Bow check. Came into a bunch of money last month. Then I got drunk and went horn and finally I woke up penniless. That's all? Thing. Face like yours ain't easy to forget. Isn't that the sweetest thing? No. <laughs> All right then. Check. Well, oh, ain't you excited? You hmm. I <laughs> Pathetic. Well, good, real good. Okay, yes. Check again? Jeez. Scared or something? I heard that. No. Here. Just a little. Hmm, watch out for money bags over here. Well, that don't surprise me, I know. That ain't too exciting. So here. Yeah, take a look at that. Ah, well done. <laughs> a little bit helps. Like a sashay. Well then. Yeah, so I heard. Well, 
That some bitch high rolls me again, I'm hand. gonna wring his that neck. That last drink was one too many. Nah. Call. There we go. <laughs> Look at you. That's what I got. Yeah, I know. Pretty pathetic. Let's raise. <laughs> Did you sneeze? Or is that really your bet? All in. All in. God damn it. There you I go. I guess I could just ah, sleep shit. right here. Yes. It's in fair. <laughs> Come to me. Yeah, <laughs> let's keep this going. That is unreal. Wasting my time with this. <clears throat> Ain't so bad. What did I do to deserve this? Man, you're real unlucky, ain't you? Oh, you don't even mean that. Ladies love a winner. Put as much money as you like on that. Yep. Nah. Now ain't that a crying shame? I'm gonna check. Keep the things cagey. Call. Forgive me, it's all I can afford. Hmm. I'm gonna race. Well, this is real fun. Colin. Nah. How's about this here? Uh-huh. Uh... Beautiful, ain't it? Okay, well, it ain't much. Oh, hello there. God damn it! Yeah. Mmm, -mm, this tastes real good. Thank you, that was fun. See you round. Turn around. Hey there. We sold his labor to the engines, and then we ate him when it got cold. And I'll tell you what, he tasted like shit. Yeah, which was only about right, because he was a Mm-hmm. Man, I can feel it on this
Mr. Mason? Oh, oh, Mr. Morgan. You want to be careful up here. Land is real treacherous. Sure. Real treacherous. I've been here before. Have you? Yes. Funny how things turn out. Never quite how you expect, is it? No, I don't suppose it is. What you shooting? Eagles. You know, the images, they really are beautiful. All thanks to you. I'd be some poor creature's bad meal by now, many times over, but for you. Oh, it's my pleasure. P please, you step away from the cliff edge. I'm trying to get an eagle there, there. Yeah, they're beautiful, but unlike you, they can fly. <laughs> Too true. You really must think I'm a buffoon, don't you? You think I'm such a dimwit, I'd just slip off the edge of a cliff? No, but, well, maybe a little. Please, sir. I'm dense, but not that dense. This area is quite safe. Quite. Quite. Oh! Oh! Ah, damn! <sighs> You're right. I am that much of a buffoon. Give me a hand, please. Put me out of my misery. Come here. Oh. 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 Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, thank you. You know what? Bugger the eagles, I'm going home. You know... I really did get some, some amazing pictures, thanks to you. And somehow, I haven't quite broken my neck. You take care. And you too, sir. Sorry for all the trouble. Oh. Come on. Good luck, sir. Although, as we both know, I'm the one who needs it. The photographs. What are you gonna do with them? Find somewhere to exhibit them, I guess. I should hope you'll come and view them. Sure will. If, uh... If I can. Yeah. 